Behind me is Exa Glacier. Exa Glacier is one of the many glaciers that falls down from the Harding Ice Field. The Harding Ice Field is massive, one of the great ice fields of North America. It is over 700 square miles and in some spots over 1,000 feet thick. In fact, the Harding Ice Field has more in common with Antarctica than it does with the rest of the Kenai Peninsula. It's windy, it's cold, and it snows over 137 feet per year. As you could imagine, it would be a pretty tough landscape to explore. And in order to find out how Exit Glacier first got its name, we have to go back in time to when people were first attempting to cross the ice field. Our story begins with a young Yule Kilcher, an immigrant from Switzerland. All right, I'll tell you what I did once. Yule Kilcher came alone to North America in 1936. He was the first group of Swiss friends that hoped to immigrate to British Columbia. I was headed for British Columbia for my friends that we we're going to start the ideal commune, you know, in the new world, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted to get out of Europe. We sensed that the war was coming along. We were the young uh, the young radical college crowd, you know. But I had met a fellow from Seward crossing the States in, 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 on the Kansas-Colorado border. Um, and when hitchhiking, I met that guy. He told me all about Catch McBay. I said, well, it's a little bit far north, etc. and so on, but uh, British Columbia sounds more like Swiss climate, fruit tree stuff, but I would, if I have time, I'll go look you up. And so he did. He came to Seward, met his friend, and then decided to continue his travels to catch Mac Bay. But there was just one problem. I had to wait three weeks for a boat to go to Saldovia. There was a boat every month. But Yule was impatient to continue his travels. Since he was an accomplished Swiss mountaineer, Yule decided to simply climb the mountains behind Seward, trek across the unmapped, unexplored Harding Ice Field, then pick his way down to catch Mac Bay a distance of over a hundred miles, all by himself. So I thought if I went up enough here, I would be on here, you know, someplace, you know. So I got up here and damn it, there's a valley. Undaunted, Yule continued his trek until he finally climbed upon the massive Harding ice field. Now, he was fully exposed to the dangerous conditions of the ice. By appearance, the surface of the Harding ice field looks deceptively smooth and safe. However, beneath this mantle of snow are deep cracks caused by the slow movement of the ice. It was when Kilcher was descending a slope that he suddenly fell through the smooth surface of snow. He had broken through the ice covering the crevasse. His rifle, which was attached crosswise to his backpack, bridged the gap and kept him from falling into the chasm. His feet were dangling in mid-air. He was at great peril of vanishing into the ice field, never to be seen again. Well, I realized if I don't get out of this hole, nobody's ever going to get me out of that hole. You know, I decided that it was quite one of these moments, you know, when you... Uh, when you're very alert, you know. It took a while, but Kilcher was able to pull himself back out of the crevasse. But rather than turning back, he continued for days across the seemingly endless field of ice. He had nearly traversed the entire ice field when the weather began to turn. And came into a two-day rainstorm. Rain and snow and hell. And I had a sleeping bag, and I was wet and miserable. And when, when, the, when the sky cleared, there were mountains ahead of me. I decided, hell, this map is no good, you know. And I went all the way back, and all the way back, and all the way back to Seward. I had it practically licked, you see, but I didn't know where I was anymore, you know. Kilcher did not successfully cross the ice field. 
He did, however, eventually make it to Homer, where he homesteaded and raised a family. However, you will never lose sight of someday completely crossing the Harding ice field. Thirty years later, Kilcher got the chance to join mountaineer Vin Homan. Originally, Homan was planning an expedition to climb Mount Truuli, a peak within the Harding ice field, the tallest mountain on the peninsula. But Kilcher convinced them to include a traverse across the Harding ice field. And then they were just going to go up here and back. And I talked them into crossing the ice field because it pissed me off that 30 years previously I couldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. I did half of it. So on April 17, 1968, the expedition set off from Homer, Alaska. Although 10 people would be involved in some aspect of the trip, only four would have the distinction of trekking the entire distance. Bill Babcock, David Johnston, along with Homan and Kilcher. From Homer, it took three days to negotiate the alder-laced rough terrain leading to the edge of the ice field. Once on the ice, they quickly ascended Mount Truuli, then set their sights for the crossing. And we climbed, we did climb Mount Truuli. We went up there, you know, there's a saddle going up it. It's, it's a beautiful trip, you know. We... For six days, the group trekked across the endless landscape of white. Distance was difficult to perceive. The world had been reduced to a sea of white. The trip was physically and mentally demanding. The group wove their way to the northeast. They would pass by Nunataks, the name of isolated peaks pushing through the thick mantle of white. Some of these they would climb. On April 23rd, the group found themselves in the midst of a fierce storm in the middle of the unprotected ice field. 60 mile an hour winds kept them pinned down in their tents for two days. Bored, the group tried to find ways to keep themselves occupied. They decided if only they had a chess set, a tournament would be a good way to pass time. But they asked, what should the chess pieces be made from? Orange cheese. We made them out of cheese. Little bit of cubes, little triangles from the made of the cheese. And then, of course, the, the ones you captured, you could eat. You see, and of course, and we played a very, very predatory damn game. But we really went predatory and we ate them. On April 25th, the group exited off the ice field on a glacier near Seward, thus giving the name to Exit Glacier. There are no roads to the glacier at the time, so the group still had to finish their long trek into town. But to their amazement, upon their arrival, they were treated like celebrities. Post-earthquake Seward was eager to establish the town as a tourist destination, so the trip was heavily publicized. The town treated the team to a steak dinner, and the local women's salon provided steam baths for the wary adventurers. The massive Harding ice field had finally been crossed. <laughs> 